Please remember the views and opinions expressed by this show or any other show on DV Radio and its guests are strictly those of said individuals and do not reflect those of the DV Radio staff nor the staff of dysfunctional veterans. Fool me once, shame on you. If fool me, we can't get fooled again. We should be able to penetrate the internet. Do I need to be liked? Absolutely not. I like to be liked. I enjoy being liked. I have to be liked. But it's not like this compulsive need to be liked, like my need to be praised. Welcome to the Marquee Dirty 30, here on DVRadio.net. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Marquee Dirty 30 here on DVRadio.net, WDVR. I am your host, Marquee Davis. Yes, I am. It's me, like always. <laughs> Coming to you from Atlanta, Georgia. Hey guys, first thing I want to do is uh, inform you guys that I have a YouTube channel. Okay, just go to YouTube and type in Marquee Dirty 30. It pops right up. Uh, subscribe and like the content. Leave your feedback. Leave your comments. You can also find me on Facebook at DV Marquee. I know you guys know that, but that's where you can find me at. Uh, you can also email the show at marquee.davis1 at gmail.com. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter and Instagram at davis one So, <clears throat> got that out of the way. Now, today, I want to talk about the United States and Iran and Saudi Arabia a little bit, all right? I want to just bring this up because if you've been living under a rock, you don't know. And if you haven't been, then you are probably not following this story because, you know, it's Iran. Who cares? We'll just nuke them to death, right? No, nah, I'm just, just saying. Now, if you didn't know, Iran bombed a uh, oil uh, place in Saudi Arabia. Or at least they're being blamed for it. Uh, remember, Iran shot down a uh, drone the United States had uh, a couple uh, months ago. Uh, so, you know, it's a little bolstering going on here, some posturing for position and, and world power this, 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 this stuff that's going on, you know. Um, but if you haven't been listening to the show very often, if you're a new listener, I'm going to let you know right now my position. I am an isolationist. I believe that the United States should focus on the people of the United States. That's my stance. That is Marquis Davis's stance is that we should focus on the United States first, all right? Now, I know some of you guys are saying, well, don't we do that? I mean, no. Let's look at it this way, okay? So we have all of these companies that used to be based here in the United States, like Ford, Chevrolet, you know, um, Apple, <laughs> Nike, big businesses that were stationed here in the United States manufacturing products that had a Made in America sticker on it that we have now outsourced to other countries because it's cheaper. Labor is cheaper, taxes are cheaper. It's more, it's more uh, expensive to make it here and sell it here than to make it somewhere and import it here. I find that ridiculous that we are now uh, losing jobs. We have lost jobs. Let me rephrase that. We have lost jobs because of the taxes placed on big businesses when they build factories. Uh, let's look at the um, the uh, environmental acts and things of that nature that were placed uh, here recently within the last administration, last four administrations or so uh, in the presidency office that have placed a constraint on manufacturing companies to actually build factories here in the United States and work out of them. Uh, look at Detroit. Detroit, they call it the Motor City. Why do they call it the Motor City? We all know this, shouldn't we? We should all know this. It's because they used to produce the most cars and things of that nature in the entire world from Detroit. Uh, people there had factory jobs, made lots of money, you know, but then they closed those factories down for cheaper production, whether it be automated or overseas. So now we have Detroit, which declared bankruptcy, what, like three or four years ago. And we're sitting here trying to figure out, well, why did they declare bankruptcy? Well, because the all the jobs left. So we need to bring those jobs back. And that's one thing that I'm liking about this uh, China uh, trade war that's going on right now is because a lot of the products that are made in China are crap. They break, they uh, fall apart, they contain lead or any or some other type of poisonous, um, you know, ingredient in them that we have to then recall and send back to get a new one. What happened to Americans being proud of 
the things that we make here in America. That's one thing I can say that I do enjoy watching from Donald Trump is the tweets that he's making about this trade war. I like to go back and read them because, you know, we're not finally standing up to China and letting them know that, hey, we are not going to accept the crappy products that you keep putting out. The uh, the knockoff bags, the knockoff airbags, the knockoff earrings, the fake jewelry that you're sending over here. Even uh, let's look at let's look at the vape products. All right. So uh, marijuana has this vape pen thingy, you know, that contains extract of marijuana. I don't know. It's just whatever. It's an extract. And what I was reading was that Ch the Chinese have found a way to duplicate the um, packaging, the barcodes, everything about these products, and they're filling it with pesticide. So it's coming here to America, people thinking it's the real deal, holy feel, and they are smoking away on their little vape pens, just, ooh, vaping away, I love it, mm-mm-mm. And then their lungs start dying because they're just inhaling pesticide. It's crazy. It's simply ridiculous that we are allowing certain countries to dictate what we do here in America. Now let's look at this Iran Saudi Arabia issue that's going on now. Let's let's look at this. Iran bombs supposedly uh an oil place in Saudi Arabia, okay? Now let's look at the gas prices now here in America, okay? So, before this happened, the gas here in Georgia where I stay at in my county in my city was around $2.20, 22 cents, you know. And and when this happened, Gas shot up to 275. 275. I know some people are like, oh, that's that's nothing. Out here in California, gas is $13 a gallon. Well, that's California. I don't care. You know, I stay in Georgia. So that was affecting me. You know, and when things directly affect us, that's when we start to be concerned. So I'm not concerned about an all-out war as Iran is saying if the United States retaliates or if Saudi Arabia retaliates. I'm not concerned about an all-out war. I'm concerned about what are we going to do if the oil ceases to come to America? Are we going to use our oil reserves from uh, Alaska or in Texas or Oklahoma? Are we going to actually tap into that so that the citizens of the United States are not dependent on foreign oil? Look at Saudi Arabia, one of the richest countries in the nation. I mean, in the world. Oh, pardon me. Oh, mine's going. I'm, I'm thinking about the nation. One of the richest countries in the world. Why? Because of oil. Everyone needs oil. Now, I don't know if this is factually true or not, but I read this somewhere. I think I'm probably making it up. Who knows? But uh, I think I read this somewhere that Saudi Arabia is the world's largest exporter of oil. So that means pretty much every country in the world who uses oil is getting it from Saudi Arabia. So by Iran attacking a uh, uh, oil depository in Saudi Arabia, they have now disrupted the flow of oil through the entire planet. The whole of Earth is dependent on Saudi Arabian oil currently. And because Iran wants to do what Iran does, which is be a dick for no reason, just like North Korea, for no reason, they have disrupted and increased the oil price for me here in Georgia. Now you guys should be upset about this as well because the oil prices are going up and unless you have stocks you know, in oil and you are now just raking it in, uh, you're upset because gas prices went up. We are all upset because gas prices went up. I know some of you listeners out there remember when gas was what? 15 cents a gallon, you old heads. You know, I used to go to the corner store with a nickel and come back with bread and a milk and two candy bars. You know, that's the, you know, your old guys like DV6. You're born in the 1912s or whatever, you know, but <laughs> this has affected not only the world scene, but us personally. I know it might seem petty or small, but it has affected us, you know, and so this is why I don't like countries that are ran by dictators who are absolute idiots when it comes to actual world politics. Let's look at North Korea. Okay, so the North Korean dictator, Kim Jong-un, uh, no, no, who we got now? Yeah, I think it's Kim, whatever his name, Kim Jong, whoever the hell he is. Uh, he, um, you know, treats his people like puppets. He makes them have military parades and have them clapping for him. And then if they don't clap loud enough, he just kills them. You know, what's the point? 
People would flock to North Korea. They have some beautiful buildings there. They have beautiful scenery. They would flock to North Korea for a, 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 a holiday, you know, or vacation destination if the place was actually kept up and had a humanitarian side to it. But it doesn't. Iran, you know, Iran used to be a, uh, what was it, a part of the uh, empire back in World War II or whatever. And it was a place that people used to go to, you know, Iran was a place where people would go. I see some old pictures of Iran back in the, what was it, 60s, 70s. People were there in bikinis, you know, having fun, smoking cigars, kind of like, you know, Cuba was before Fidel Castro took over. So what I'm saying is that these places could be very instrumental to world success. I'm not talking about just politic, you know, just na national success, but world success if the leaders got their heads out of their ass. You know, if instead of me trying to control the populace based off of religion, if I just let the people live their lives, they would introduce new technologies, new theories, new ideas that can help the world. Look at look at us in here in the United States. We are free. We are free here in the United States. If you, if you don't think we're free here in the United States, I want you to please go look at your constitution again, okay? Those The stuff that happened in the 60s with the civil rights movement is over. Black people, minorities can eat wherever we want to now. We can be whatever we want to now. Those days are over with. This is the time where we as a people here in the United States are becoming technologically advanced, smarter, because we are mingling. We are becoming one. Understand what I'm saying? I know it's 2019 and it should have happened a long time ago, but now we are sharing ideas on a much wider basis. But the people within those countries, North Korea, Iran, any other dictator state, aren't allowed to share their ideas and spread them throughout the entire world. And that right there is sad because it is so sad that there aren't any people in those countries who think they can't do it. There are people that who know they can do it. They know they can come up with a brand new idea. They know they can come up with a brand new technology that can help the world. Look at Flint, Michigan. Flint, Michigan had a water problem, uh, but then you had people who have ideas, who have technologies like Jaden Smith, who created something that can help purify the water there. This technology can be used in other countries like in Africa, where they don't they, they may not have running water, but they may have a, a a a a pool of water that they can then use this technology to clean, filter and drink. Someone in Iran or someone in North Korea may have the same idea or better idea, but they can't get it out because we have idiots that are dictators in these countries who can't see the world for what the world is. We are not just nations of one people, okay? We are a world of a lot of people. Yes, I'm an isolationist. I believe that we should focus on America first. But when we have that opportunity to make something that can affect the entire world and change it for the better, we should use it. That is my position, you know? Uh, let's be reasonable here, people. Let's be reasonable here. Right now, Iran is thinking about themselves, okay? which could then turn into a global catastrophe because if they do something stupid, we're going to destroy them. Bottom line, bottom line, who's going to come to their aid? Russia? Maybe not. North Korea? We'll kill them too. China? China hasn't been a global power until just recently. All right? China was the, 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 the stomping ground for the British and the Russians and whoever else wanted to just come in there and take it over and do whatever they wanted to do. That was the stomping ground. Just go to China and do whatever the hell you want to do. All right. I know China is the second or the, probably the number one world's you know, economy now or whatever. But still, we as Americans have a gift that many in the world want. Some of us take that gift for granted. Let me say that again. Us here in America, we were giving a gift. We were given that gift of freedom, of the right to choose what we want to do, the right to say what we want to say, 
the right to practice what religion we want to practice, the right to marry who we want to marry, the right to have sex with who we want to have sex with when they're of age. Okay, all you pedophiles out there is when they're of age. Let's get that straight here. Uh, <laughs> but in other countries, you don't have that right. You don't have it. You know, and then when you look at the immigration stance and how we are turning people away that are coming here from countries that are in a civil war, I'm okay with that. Okay. And let me tell you why I'm okay with that. Because first and foremost, what our politicians should be doing is vetting these people. Okay. We don't know who's coming in and out of the country if we're just allowing everyone to come in. And if we allow everyone to come into the country, then we can have another 9 11 happen right under our nose. You know, a major attack if we don't know who's coming in and out and in the next segment I, I want to talk about how iran could wage a total war against the united states and our allies if it ever came to that but right now i just let's let's just you know reset here because when we allow people into the country that we do not know who's in here crazy stuff could potentially happen so, you know, I know we've been seeing images of the camps and the stuff that's going on down at the border. But in the end, it's for the greater good. I mean, I, I hate to say it that way, but in the end, uh, yeah, it, it is for the greater good. Because when you, like I said before, allow just anyone to just come into the country then they can do what they want to do. And that right there would be a travesty. Let's look at other countries around the world. Uh, let's look at Iran, for instance. You know, I'm, I'm pretty sure people can't just come walking in and out of that country. Nope. Um, and why? Because they are afraid that somebody might infiltrate and attack it. Now, and that's the truth. You know, and us here in America, we've been through that in 2001. And we should understand that, yeah, I understand that, yeah, they came here on fake visas and, you know, all this other stuff. And But still, we can't allow it to happen again. Now, with the Iran and Saudi Arabia issue, we need to focus on how we can stop an all-out war from occurring. Whether it be diplomatically or whether it just be like we did Iraq and just start bombing the hell out of them. Because then they won't be able to do an all-out war. We'll be the one doing the war. <laughs> oh man all right so after this commercial break we're going to talk about how iran could actually you know cause an all-out war and how they could fight us in an all-out war i read an interesting article i'm gonna read you some snippets from that as well so you're gonna listen to the marky dirty 30 here on dvradio.net wdvr i'm marky davis stay tuned after this break TV Radio is for you, the veteran, active duty service member, caregiver, and civilian supporter of the military. TVRadio.net is the online veteran network made for and by veterans. From original shows to syndication, you can find it here on TVRadio.net. In an effort to continue our mission and make better quality shows for each and every one of you, visit our Patreon at Patreon.com forward slash DV Radio. Whether you can only pledge $1 per month or that entire million dollar inheritance your uncle left you, there's a tier with rewards waiting for you. So why not keep DV Radio running and get rewarded at the same time? Head to Patreon.com forward slash DV Radio now. That's Patreon.com forward slash DV Radio. Radio. And welcome back to the Marquee Dirty 30 here on DVRadio.net. WDVR is me. Yes, me again, Marquee Davis. So, <clears throat> I want to discuss to you what would uh, Iran do for an all-out war, quote-unquote. So, uh, Iran, they recently purchased uh, a, a whole mess load of Scud B missiles. These are short range ballistic missiles from the Liberian government. Uh, these are Soviet R 17. Uh, so they can shoot a lot of missiles. 
a hell of a lot of missiles. Uh, they got the Shahab, the Shooting Star Dash One, which is uh, based on the Scud B, and it's a nuclear threat type of long range missile. Uh, it's liquid fuel, uh, and it can hold about 2,000 pounds of explosives. So, uh, you know, with a missile that can travel up to 186 miles, yeah, Iran can do some damage um, to, I guess, Afghanistan? I mean, 186 miles, is that really going to reach the United States? Mm, nah. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, so, they have a Nodong-1 missile as well, which, you know, it's called the Shaheed 3 Wow, which is a variant of North Korea's Nodong-1. Um, and this one can hit, oh, it's desired to hit the U.S. Oh, no, it can hit the U.S. base in Korea. So, uh, they could, they could do some damage with missiles. It'll be a lot of missiles that they shoot. <clears throat> a hell of a lot of missiles that they shoot. So, is that a threat to us here in the United States? Nah, not really. But, you know, think of the troops. You know, think of the guys that's in Iraq and Afghanistan, you know, the ones that are in Japan, the ones that are in Korea. You know, this will be a whole regional type of war, similar to what we have now in Iraq and Afghanistan, where they're just like country type of war. But it'd be a regional war. You would have Saudi Arabia in the war. You would Jerusalem, Israel. Yes, they would definitely be in the war. And then you would have some African countries, maybe Egypt, Syria. Um, Syria's not Africa, but, Africa, but you know what I'm saying. You know, you have those those countries in this war as well. So, an all-out war would be an all-out war in that region. Now, this could get nasty if, say, Russia chooses a side and this Iran and Russia would try to attack the United States mainland. Uh, same thing with China. You know, then you gotta think, it's like this little bitty incident could cause a whole World War III for no reason because of little guy syndrome. That is exactly kind of what it is. Iran wants to be the big dog in the region, but they're not. They're not. And they want to be so bad. But who cares about Iran? I mean, let's be real here. Iran wants to be on the, on the world stage so bad that they are just randomly attacking Saudi Arabia for no reason. Doesn't make sense. It makes no sense at all. Makes no sense at all. But to them, it does. To them, it seems as though like they're now bolstering themselves. They're posturing for a position, you know, and it's like, why? Why are you even doing this? Uh, for, for what reason do you tiff that you continue to try to make the world your little biatch? And you can't do it. You don't have the infrastructure. You do not have the capabilities. You do not have the technology. It's just ridiculous that you even think for a second that you have the manpower, weaponry, and technology to even face the United States. Yes, you may have come up with a nuclear weapon. whoopity doo da. We have a nuke that could pretty much wipe out the entire region with one drop. You know, and, and, and as a leader of a country, that's the first thing I would be thinking about. My people. Okay, let's figure out a way so that my people don't feel the devastating effects of what the enemy may do to us. Uh, another article I was reading says that the... Uh, Iranians may have set the drop of a dime or a phone call may just start uh, randomly attacking buildings or shooting up, up, you know, stores, or they may have bombs placed somewhere that'll blow off at the same as, you know, simultaneously. Um, really don't know. I mean, we see it in movies all the time. Like, you know, look at face off, you know, at the beginning of the movie, he's planting a bomb inside of the, of the hospital. And, and then, you know, he, uh, he takes them on a chase and then face off, ah, face off. My wife's favorite movies for some reason. I have no idea why. And she thinks Nicolas Cage is a good actor. But that's for another show. Uh, we could talk about that all day because Nicolas Cage is not a good actor. If you agree with me, comment in the section below. If you don't agree with me, comment in the section below. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Nicolas Cage. Oh, my God. The only movie he was in that's good is National Treasure. Ugh. I hate Nicolas Cage over acting. Okay. I digress. Iran is a threat, but it's not a threat that is so serious that we need to stop focusing on American issues. Things that are pressing here in America, 
We shouldn't stop focusing on them because Iran wants to be dicks in the region. I said it. I went there. <sighs> That's like North Korea. We shouldn't stop doing what we're doing because North Korea says, oh, now we have nukes and everybody claps and Kim Jong fat ass or whatever he is, whatever his name is. He decides that, oh, oh now let's kill my uncle. You know, so <laughs> God, I don't I don't like I, I, I watch a lot of fascinating documentaries on um dictators over the years, you know, Idi Amin, Hitler, Stalin, uh, Mao Zedong, uh, Kim Jong Sun, you know, uh, people like that. I watch a lot of documentaries on that because I like to learn about the facet of that type of person, like what drives you to become such a face for evil, you know, um, like if you if you look up the history of Joseph Stalin, OK, he had good intentions coming up through the ranks, but his political ideology was just warped. You know, look at Mao Zedong, same thing, coming up through the ranks to become the sole leader of China at the time, uh, uh, become the sole supreme leader of China. You know, during that time, he 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 had great ideas that just didn't come into practice. They weren't practical, you know, and, and, and that's what happens with a lot of these dictators. They they, they are so, you know, they're, they're, they have such a great brass persona that they can just change the minds of the entire continent or country or wherever they are to follow behind them. And then when they get to that level, they stall. They don't know what to do to make the country better. You know, look at Hitler. Hitler thought taking over the entire European peninsula that it would be wondrous for his people. But instead, it turned out to be a bad thing, you know, dragging Italy into his war, you know, and dragging Japan into his wars turned out to be a terrible thing for those countries because he lost sight of let me just build my country to the best that I can so that future generations can live prosperous without homelessness, without poverty. And like I said in the first segment, contribute to the entire planet. It's those warped ideologies based on either religion or opinion, whichever one you want to say, you know, that transforms a country into something that it should not be. I was watching um, a show on, I think it was Showtime or Cinemax or whatever, and it was based on uh, if the Germans, if the Axis powers had won World War II, what the world would be like. And America was split in half between German side and Japanese side. It's a very fascinating alternative history show. Um, you know, they're making up stuff as they go, but it's very fascinating to see. And even if you watch shows like The Handmaiden's Tale, how a, you know, religious cult took over the United States, you know, and, and, and transformed it into something that just is asinine, you know? Looking at stuff like that, even though it's fictitious, not real, it gives you a good study on the human mind and how the hum how humans turn themselves into idiots. I'll say it like that. How, how humans turn themselves into idiots. Hmm. Hey, if you have anything to add, man, you can always email the show at marquee.davis1 at gmail.com. You can uh, tweet me or you can follow me on Instagram at marquee.davis1. Uh, you can follow me on YouTube at the Marquee Dirty 30. Marquee Dirty 30 comes right up. Subscribe, like, leave your comments. Uh, and with that, everybody, I'm going to leave you guys with that cliffhanger. I'm, I'm, I'm leaving you with a question. You know, we got Barracks Talks coming up next, but I'm leaving you with a question tonight that I want you to think about. You know, are we just idiots? <laughs> and with that, that has been the Marquee Dirty 30 here on dvradio.net, WDVR. Uh, I love you guys. You stay safe and uh, good night.